Solomon writes in Proverbs 18.22, He who finds a wife finds what is good and receives favor from the Lord. But guys, what about those poor wives who end up with us? <laughs> that may be a topic for another day. But for now, I want you all to focus on your mate's best qualities. And if you aren't married yet, now is a great time to think about the qualities that you are looking for in a future husband or wife. The best quality or the best marriages are built by couples who try to remember the qualities that initially attracted them to one another. If you want to build a happy marriage or improve a less than happy one, do these four things. Number one, list your mate's best qualities. Let's see. Deb is kind. She loves students. She has a servant's heart. She puts Jesus first over everything. And that's just for starters. Write down the things you love most about your mate and endeavor to keep those things in mind at all times. When stresses and strains surface in your relationship, as they inevitably will, go over the list in your mind. And if necessary, refer to the written copy as a reminder. Reminder, add to list. She's a great cook. We share common likes in music. She is an encourager. Number two, focus on them. <coughs> Excuse me. Think how your mate's great qualities enrich your life and how much you would miss them if he or she was not around. When you change your focus, you change your feelings. And when you change your feelings, you change your perspective, your approach, and your reactions. Number three, verbalize them. Proverbs 31:28 says, her children arise and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. Our children, including the children that we influence, learn how to build a great marriage or a miserable one by watching us. That thought alone should put the brakes on our criticisms and bring out the compliments in their place. And number four, nurture them. Galatians 6, 7 tells us, do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. People wither under complaints, whereas they thrive and they grow through praise and encouragement. Seize any moment worth celebrating and magnify it. In 1 Corinthians 13, verse 7, the Apostle Paul, speaking of love, bottom lines it. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. If you love someone, you will be loyal, no matter the cost. You will always believe in the other person, always expect the best of them, and always stand your ground in defending them. That's pretty good stuff, and that's the word for you today. Today is the day that we are headed back to St. Augustine from camp. <coughs> we should be arriving sometime this evening, so I hope that you will all pray us home, and pray especially for Grace Smith, our Children's Special Events Coordinator, and for Malia Hendry, uh, Clint, Pastor Clint's daughter. They have spent the week with us at Real Life Camp, and will have only today and tomorrow to unpack, do laundry, and repack before leaving on their mission trip to Costa Rica first thing Monday morning. We are so grateful for these young ladies whose faith is so evident in their lives. Also, if you were planning on a delicious pasta dinner tonight, be aware the Scout Troop spaghetti dinner for tonight has been postponed until the fall. And don't forget to join us this Sunday for worship at the Village Church. Our services are at 9 and 11 a.m., and we will be celebrating the Lord's Supper this Sunday. And if you can't make it in person, be sure to join us on our Facebook page or our YouTube channel at the Village Church at World Golf Village. Have a great weekend as we flip the calendar into the month of June. And I'll see you on Monday with something new from the latest edition of The Word for You Today.